Hello, welcome back to AZH Wound Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Nisgoda, your humble correspondent related to wound care issues. Got a very interesting patient I want to share with you today. We oftentimes talk about diabetic foot ulcers and the problems with foot abnormalities due to uh, diabetes and diabetic neuropathy. Oftentimes we forget though that there are other types of neuropathy and these patients can present exactly like a patient with diabetic foot neuropathy. Here you see a patient that presents with a foot ulcer, classic location for a diabetic foot ulcer uh, over a metatarsal head. You see the changes in, in the patient's foot that correspond to uh, this ulcer. We see uh, these digits being pulled back um, <clears throat> by the uh, extensor tendons. They're shortening here, pulling those things up in this deformity. And when we have a deformity of the digits like this, we know that we uh, plantar flex the metatarsal heads and this metatarsal head is what is taking the pressure and the impact when the patient's walking. Um, but interestingly this patient is not a diabetic. He is has neuropathy of another etiology but the characteristics of the foot are very very similar. Um, the concerning thing here is not just the ulcer and the callus but the examination of the wound itself. Um, if you were to take a Q-tip and probe, you see that there is some depth here to the, the wound base. And in fact, if I probe with the other end of the Q-tip, I go deep, then I can touch uh, the metatarsal head. So this is a wound uh, that does probe to bone. Clinically, this would meet the definition of bony colonization contamination and uh, likely represent the clinical diagnosis of osteomyelitis. We are going to send this patient for imaging and MRI to confirm the presence of bone. But this is a mechanical issue and we're going to need to take the pressure off this patient's foot. Um, this can be accomplished with surgical techniques where we uh, go in and take that metatarsal head and allow these tendons to relax to uh, create more of a normal foot anatomy. The other option, and we're looking at uh, this with this patient, is a total contact cast, which would relieve the pressure. Um, but one of the important things on wound care with a patient like this is debridement, and we're obviously going to def to uh, debride the callus. And the reason we're doing that is that the callus uh, allows uh, subcallus uh, tunneling and undermining, and you see the, the undermining that's evident all the way around that wound. Uh, and that doesn't allow a topical to get to that area, placing the patient at risk for infection. So we're going to go ahead and use uh, our standard sharp curette to debride this tissue. And again, as I've demonstrated in prior videos, we're using this raking technique where you take that callus down in a circumferential fashion. I really like to debride uh, the margins of the callus first to really define the planes of tissue before we uh, move centrally towards the ulcer. Once again, as we're debriding, I can test the depth of my debridement by just palpating the tissue with my thumb. Uh, that tissue that's callous feels very hard, whereas the tissue out to the side feels softer. And when you get a soft tissue on the margin of the ulcer, uh, you can appreciate that you're reaching the end of the depth of your callous debridement. Now I've got the margins down quite nicely. What I'm going to do is come back in and work the center part of the, the callus. So you see I've raised that callus lip. I'm going to come back and take that. And again, to breathe the margins makes this part of the derivative much easier as you've defined your tissue planes. And you see as we take that callus away, the tissues underneath are starting to express themselves. Again, because of the pressure on that metatarsal head in a plantar fashion, basically extruding those subdermal tissues out of the wound really speaks to the, the dynamics of the bony deformity and the forces that deformity and pressure is putting on the, the tissues causing the ulceration. 
These patients just do not feel trauma. Uh, they don't feel the formation of callus for you or I. Those without neuropathy, this would feel like a rock or a pebble in your shoe. You would notice it and immediately stop. Because that tissue is extruding itself, this makes the debris move even more challenging. I'm trying to get all that callus out. You can see that tissue is very friable, bleeds readily. So if you're not careful, you can get yourself into a little bit of a bleeding issue. You see how thin we are right here. And we're just about done with our dissection. This tissue feels very soft all the way around. We've got our nice healthy base. A little of that tissue centrally is necrotic. Might take a little of this. for today. So we've essentially created a fairly flat ulcer surface. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of the wound care window and the explanation of not all foot ulcers are diabetic. In fact, there are patients with neuropathy that present classically with a neuropathic ulcer.